good. All right, the purpose of this morning is to provide an update in relation to the murder of Jasmine Carr. Um, I just ask you at the outset to um, respect the fact that there's some things I won't be able to tell you because we've arrested somebody for this murder, but it is my intention to tell you as much as we can and to provide you with information that will enable a public appeal to gather more evidence. <coughs> um, Jasmine was a 21-year-old girl who originated from India and lived with her auntie and uncle at Flinders Park, and her mum still lived in India. She was working at Southern Cross as a carer and was studying to become a nurse. She was reported missing by her auntie and uncle at the Highland Street Police Station on Saturday the 6th of March this year, um, and the catalyst for that was that they'd had a call from her employer and said she hadn't turned up to work. And they had assumed that she had been in her room um, from the previous night. They were obviously immediately concerned. The missing persons report was lodged and an investigation commenced. Uh, her car was found at the workplace, which increased um, concerns of the family and police. On Sunday the 7th of March, uh, detectives from Southern Districts and major crime dis detectives spoke to a man known to Jasmine and had a conversation with him. And as a result of the conversation, he agreed to take police to the Flinders Rangers and show the police where she was buried. Um, and he denied being involved in any way in her death. I can't discuss with you other conversations we had with him or what his responses were, except to say that he took us to the grave and denied involvement. Um, that night, um, that man was arrested. He's a 20-year-old male um, from Carolda Park and he was charged with failing to notify the coroner of the death. The following day, Forensic Response Section, major crime detectives and police from far north um, attended the scene um, in Moorlana Creek and conducted an exhumation and recovered the remains of a young woman. Uh, there has been no formal identification at this stage, but we're proceeding on the assumption that it's Jasmine's remains, and obviously her family have been advised. As a result of that examination, investigators were satisfied that Jasmine had not died at her own hands, and in fact had been the victim of a murder. That evening, um, major crime detectives interviewed the offender at Port Augusta Police Station. He was arrested and charged with the murder and a forensic examination of him conducted and he's since been remanded in custody. A post-mortem was conducted the following day and the post-mortem has reinforced to investigators their belief that Jasmine was murdered. In terms of when, um, we believe most likely in the early hours of the 6th of March, um, but that's not a certainty. So what we know now is that Jasmine finished work on Friday night at about 10 p.m. at Southern Cross Homes at North Plimpton, and that her car was left in the car park where she parked it at the commencement of her shift. We believe it to be extremely unlikely that Jasmine left willingly with anybody and are investigating the possibility that she was taken by force. We'd appeal to anybody who saw a 2009 blue metallic coloured Commodore, registration number S267CJ, or an Indian male about 20 years of age with a neatly trimmed beard and moustache and neatly dressed. Um, we ask anybody who may have seen either that vehicle or a similar person loitering in the car park, apparently waiting for somebody, or in contact with Jasmine. It's also possible that people may have seen that person in the weeks leading up to her death, um, attempting to make observations at those premises. So we know Jasmine left at 10 o'clock and we know that she was in a vehicle 
that passed through the safety cam at Virginia at 10.46 p.m. and travelled along the highway to Williston near Gawler. And what we think happened there is the offenders travelled down South Road and missed the turn off at Virginia and has gone the wrong way, then done a U-turn, come back to Port Wakefield Road and commenced to travel north. We'd appeal to anybody with dash cam between 10.46pm that night and about 11pm on the road to Gawler or Williston uh, to make contact with us um, because that would be very important to the investigation. At 12.09am, the vehicle activated a safety cam camera at Port Wakefield and then, sorry, at 12.09, the safety cam was activated at Two Worlds and at 12.40 again at Port Bakeville. So similarly, anybody with dash cam between 12.10 uh, and 12.40. We don't know if the offender stopped in Port Wakefield or went to any of the shops there or refueled, for example, but we'd be interested to know that. At 3.07 a.m., the vehicle went through safety cams at Stirling North. Um, this is particularly critical. Um, we'd like to know whether in fact the offender um, immediately turned right to travel to the Flinders or whether perhaps went to a service station in Port Augusta to get fuel or drinks or the like. Um, there's no evidence at this stage to indicate he did, but that's certainly something we'd like to know. And if anybody possibly saw um, a young Indian couple, or they may have just seen this young Indian male in that vehicle. So the vehicle's left Stirling North at 3.07am, and then it's activated back in that camera travelling south at 2.27. So it's a period of 11 and a half hours, and taking up travelling time means that the offender was basically between Stirling North, Morolana Creek, back to Stirling North in that area, before about 11 hours, um, and if you take out travelling time, that leaves about eight hours um, to bury Jasmine and a considerable amount of time unaccounted for. So we're trying to track where he went in that time. And on his way home, we know he drove straight through from Stirling North back to the city. We're trying to locate some missing property um, Jasmine's brown handbag, her black slip-on shoes, and her work identification and access tags are missing. And we'll have um, some photos of those which we can give you afterwards. We're also interested in, it may be in a parking bay. It, uh, they, these items uh, could be in a parking bay, they could be discarded on the roadside. Um, but we're looking as well for a plate of some description and a knife. So we think this plate and a knife may be together, um, but you shouldn't assume that the knife was involved in her cause of death because it wasn't. But we, these items may be together somewhere. Jasmine's missing property, a plate or a kitchen utensil of a similar type, and a knife. I'm happy to take some questions. What kind of picture do you get from the safety cameras? Uh, I'll show you a picture after, but we've got a picture which shows a male in the vehicle. And can you see Jasmine at all? No, but we believe she's in the car. Where in the car do you think she was? Oh, I won't speculate on that. But she wasn't seen in the passenger seat? No. Do you think she was alive then? Oh, I wouldn't speculate on that because we, we don't know. Are uh, police any closer to understanding how she may have come uh, to be killed? Yes, we know exactly how she died, but uh, we can't say. When you talk about the plate and the knife, did she have that in her hair bag? Was it what? No, we believe it's associated with a man who drove her to the Flinders. Who owned the car? The car is owned by a friend, um, and um, you'll see on social media that car had different number plates on it. They were number plates allocated in the past. But the number I've given you today is the number that was on the car on the night. The other thing is that 
Um, it may be in the weeks leading up, um, because that car was borrowed for the night, uh, but in the weeks leading up, um, the Indian male um, was most likely driving a silver Commodore. Um, how long do you think he may have been at the premises that had worked for perhaps watering different instances in the lead up to when she went missing, possibly over months or weeks? Or? Um, well, we're really trying to establish that, but we believe that that would form an important part of our investigation, showing what was actually happening in the lead up to this event. Would I be right in saying that you believe that she was being stalked before she was murdered? We're gathering evidence to show that, yes. Apart from the accused, are police looking at anyone else at the moment who may have been involved in Jasmine's murder? It's difficult to say because we, we don't know if what everybody's told us yet is the truth. So we've still got to gather corroboration for the various versions people have given us. So, um, but we don't believe anybody else is directly involved. Why do you believe that night he took his friend's car and not his car? Was it something as simple as his car wasn't working or...? His... No, his car was fine. And where is that car now? Was it seized? We've seized the car for forensic examination. Is there CCTV in the Southern Cross car park? Uh, we've got CCTV. CCTV from a number of locations that we have to look at, but specifically the camera locations, I can't tell you now. Uh, is there a weapon that you're still looking for? Uh, we know how she died, um, and that didn't involve the knife, but we are looking for the knife because that forms part of our investigation for other reasons. But in terms of any other weapon? No. And when, when you've um, got this public appeal for anyone who saw an Indian male, would it be easier if there was not a suppression on any identities? Well, there's lots of reasons why we have suppression orders, but um, it would be unlikely that we, we would release an image of an offender in these circumstances anyway. Um, it's, it's very distinctive. There's not a lot of 20-year-old, neatly groomed Indian males in the car park, I would suggest, at 10pm. Is there any more description in terms of what he was wearing? Uh, no, just that he was neatly dressed. Are you aware of motive at all? Yes. Can you detail what that is to us? No. And in 